Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is the last video that I want to show you today. Uh, the topic is enzyme efficiency, and what we're going to try to do here is to see what are the factors that control the efficiency of an enzyme. Okay, so what we have here is a general scheme for an enzyme catalyzed reaction. Enzyme plus substrate uh, react to generate the enzyme substrate complex, and that gives products. And what I've done here is actually plot an uh, energy diagram for, for the reaction profile. Okay, it's a little bit different because uh, from the enzyme substrate, here we don't go to uh, products directly, we just go to enzyme products and that dissociates. Uh, uh, but since this barrier for dissociation is very small, it actually uh, mechanistically is essentially the same, or kinetically is the same, to actually have this mechanism than that. Uh, the presence of this is not going to alter at all uh, the kinetics. Okay, great. Uh, the rate constant, uh, sorry, the rate law for that uh, particular process, as we know, is Michaelis uh, kinetics, this, K sub M plus concentration of S. As it turns out, this v, uh, Vmax and Km are actually related to those rate constants, and, and as we derived exactly how this happened either day, we're actually now ready to spell out what Vmax and Km are in terms of uh, Kv, K, Ka, and Ka prime. Okay, so remember that Vmax versus uh, K sub B, concentration of N sum at time zero, concentration of substrate, and then K sub M was actually a relationship between these three rate constants which was uh, k sub a prime plus k sub b over uh, k sub a. Okay? Now, enzyme efficiency uh, is uh, determined by uh, this. That's what we call enzyme efficiency. Okay? And that has uh, the Greek letter eta is equal to uh, k sub b over k sub a prime plus k sub b over k sub a, which is exactly the same as k sub a, k sub b, over k sub a prime plus k sub b. Okay, so let's try to discuss a little bit uh, more what these rate constants are. This k sub b is the rate constant that controls uh, the reaction. Okay, that's the important rate constant uh, in the reaction. Notice in the scenario diagram how uh, the reaction point ES giving products is the one that actually has larger activation energy. That means that it, this is the process that is going to be the slowest step, and therefore it's going to be the rate determining step. Okay, so uh, this is actually what we call the catalytic constant. That is exactly uh, something that the enzyme can improve uh, as it evolves. Okay, uh, this usually receives the name of uh, K cat. All right, so uh, this is going to be the same as K sub A, K cat over. Uh, K A prime plus K cat. Uh, the name of this risk content, the catalytic constant, also receives the uh, uh, name of turnover frequency of the enzyme. Essentially, it, this is a, a first order rate constant uh, in which the only thing that you measure, you're you measuring there is how many times per second an enzyme can uh, turn up, uh, uh, be into the product. Essentially, how often you can crank out a product from the reaction. Right, so this is this K cat is exactly what the enzyme uh, uh, has control over. Okay, so imagine that an enzyme has evolved uh, over the years, has been refining the reaction mechanism so that uh, uh, this barrier via evolution uh, uh, becomes smaller and smaller. Okay, so if the enzyme evolves to actually make this uh, barrier smaller and smaller, what happens is that the catalytic constant becomes larger and larger. And eventually, uh, you're actually going to hit a limit here when this k-cat is very large, where uh, in the de denominator you're going to be able to uh, neglect k-a prime with respect to k-cat if this k-cat is very large. Okay, so in the optimum situation where the enzyme has evolved so the, so the, uh, the barrier for reaction actually has decreased to a point where you're no, no longer the rate limiting step, you actually can see that this turns into k-a k-cat over uh, k cat, those are going to cancel out, and again, in the limit of upper efficiency, of uh, optimal efficiency, this is simply k sub a. Okay, so if the best enzymes are the ones that uh, have decreased the barrier to the reaction so much that uh, the rate of the reaction no longer depends on how fast can the enzyme turn uh, the substrate into product, now the rate limit instead this is actually determined by Ka, which is simply the rate for association of the enzyme substrate complex. Okay? 
So this is exactly where we make a uh, tie with something that we saw uh, last uh, chapter, which was the concept of diffusion control. Okay? And we can make a tie there, because notice that again, if the enzyme is so good that uh, the moment that it sees an enzyme subject complex, it turns into product, then the relevant step is actually going to be how fast can the enzyme and substrate diffuse through solution uh, uh, to control each other, okay, to, to uh, uh, make an enzyme substrate complex, then whenever you actually have that enzyme substrate complex form, automatically there's just going to be turned to product. Okay, so, uh, well, uh, what we actually saw is that uh, last chapter, there was an upper limit for uh, diffusion control here. We actually calculated how much this number was for water at 25 Celsius. And what we actually uh, came up with is a number, you can review this in your notes, of what 7.4, 10 to the 9 per molar per second. Okay? So the question is, well, is there any enzyme uh, in the world that is actually reached this limit of catalytic efficiency? So if you actually uh, plug uh, uh, here Ka, uh, K sub B, Ka prime, K sub B, do you actually ever get very close to this uh, limit, which will be just the one in which the only thing that is limiting the speed of the reaction is how fast ENS can diffuse through solution and uh, bind to generate the enzyme substrate complex. And it turns out there's a couple of enzymes that are actually getting very close to this, for example, catalase, uh, uh, which is an enzyme that catalyzes the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide to water and oxygen. Okay, uh, that is about uh, 10 to the 8 or so. It's in the 10 to the 8 to 10 to the 9 range. Acetylcholinesterase is also reaching that. Today, we actually uh, uh, are saying that those enzymes, catalase and acetylcholinesterase, have reached catalytic perfection. Notice that this is a very ideal limit. Uh, it actually uh, requires pure water, and that's exactly not what you have inside your body, right? When catalase is working in blood, uh, you actually don't have water, you have something that is much more viscous, so the upper limit is not really uh, 7.4 10 to the 9 per molar per second, it's probably going to be a little lower. So anything that is in the, the 10 to the 8, 10 to the 9 uh, per molar per second, we already say that that's as good as it gets. And again, there's a couple of enzymes like acetylcholinesterase and catalase that are actually getting.